through the use of a global climate simulator called En-ROADS, we can now see impacts that dozens of current policies have on hundreds of factors like energy prices, temperature, air quality, and sea level rise. Here to explain this exact simulator, we have Andrew Jones, executive director and co-founder of the Climate Interactive, and Laura Iyer, CEO and founder of Southern Sustainability Institute, who will lead us through a live simulation of our climate future here, right here on our big blue planet. So please help me welcome Andrew Jones and Laura Iyer. Great to see you. Thank you, <laughs> Thanks for being here. Thank you very much. All right, everybody, are you ready to roll up your sleeves? We've got something for you to do with our simulator En-ROADS. Could you pull up the simulator? This is a simulator that we built with MIT Sloan, and we used it with 128 members of Congress in the two years before the passage of our big climate law, the Inflation Reduction Act, led by Senator Sheldon Whitehouse here in Rhode Island. Give a hand to Sheldon Whitehouse and that victory. <clears throat> The reason that he uses it and he introduces us to so many members of Congress to use it and businesses, communities around the world use it, frankly, it's because it's really fast. Imagine if we had some climate action, you'll see in the top left, instead of taking several days, you immediately get to see what impacts are. So that's gonna set up a challenge for you in a minute to create a better climate future. So, Let's first look at where things are headed without any action. And what we see is a baseline here. In the top left, Laura's gonna make it really big. This is a graph from 2000 out to 2100 for where we get our energy with minimal climate action. This brown area is more cold. Now think, this is not just the United States. This is global. So think, China, India, Indonesia, Brazil, South Africa, all around the world, on top of it, oil, on top of that, Methane, natural gas. On top of that, wind and solar. See that green wedge expanding? Bioenergy and nuclear. If this is where we get our energy, then what we get is greenhouse gas emissions. We add in methane, F gases, and others. This is the pollution that is causing climate change. See that little blip here in 2020? There's a little blip from this recession we've seen from the COVID effect, but it continues up and up. This is all the emissions into the atmosphere, primarily burning coal, oil, and gas, minus any removals we get back into the soil, back into biomass. So if this is where things are headed, unfortunately, we head to 3.6 degrees Celsius. The goal, well, you know the goal. What's the goal for that temperature? Below 2 degrees, absolutely, with an effort to get all the way down to 1.5. That is the challenge that we have here today. Now, mind you, where we're headed, unfortunately, is really not about temperature. It's about impacts. Let's look at sea level rise. We have a map. Climate Central make these beautiful maps, uh, and they send the information over to us, and then we're going to go search and look anywhere in the world. By the way, the model's free online, 20 languages. Go use it yourself. Eighth grade kids around the world are using it right now. Here's a map. In that scenario, we can see Fort Adams St. Park right here. We took a ride right through this neighborhood today, this morning. Who else traveled through Wellington Avenue? That is a neighborhood with homes and common. Anyone know a business that's over there in Wellington Avenue? What is around there? Yeah, okay. We know this place. Anyone here under 25 years old? Raise your hand. Under 25. Thank you. This generation, children of this generation will be my age when this happens. This is 2100. That is part of the ocean when children of that generation are my age. Let's look more closely at Fort Adams State Park. Here we are. Look more closely up here, and we can see. See that? Look out the window. That Cement out there, right over there, will be ocean unless we take more action. Right now, hurricanes are being strengthened by climate change. Anyone remember Sandy and Irene that hit this area? How about Bob in the 90s, 1991, Hurricane Bob? Okay, sea level rise there, or the storm surge, was about four meters. 
when we simulate, now she's going to go down here four meters, this is the effect of four meters. Maybe pull back, Laura, and let's look. This is the effect of four meters of storm surge. We want to avoid this. Let's talk about oceans. Oceans have absorbed 90% of the excess heat created by climate change. They have been this huge buffer. If climate change is a bully between uh, them and us, oceans have stepped in the middle and taken a lot of hits and protected human society. The cost has been great. 25% of the greenhouse gases of the carbon dioxide that goes in the atmosphere actually gets pulled into the oceans themselves. We've seen the effect regarding ocean acidification. As this line goes down, if we do a weak action future, we see acidification. That is, pH goes down, down, down. Carbonate gets destroyed in the oceans. That is a building block for, for plankton, for shells and skeletons, part of the shellfish industry. It's very important. We want to make a better future. Can we avoid ocean acidification? Can we avoid sea level rise? Can we do that? Yeah, all right, here's the challenge. I'm gonna ask you how, how to do it. Down here at the bottom of the simulator are 18 different areas of action. So look down there, either think about what we're doing in the world or read these words. So what are we gonna do? Name as briefly as possible, call out what is something we can do to prevent climate change. Electrify transportation, electric, electric cars, charging stations, etc. And so there it is. Hit the replay. 3.6 goes to 3.4. It's no silver bullet. It is not a magic solution. What else do we need to complement electrified transport to get a large benefit? Carbon pricing. Why carbon pricing? Because electrification also needs decarbonization. We need to get coal, oil, and gas out of the system so that when we draw upon electricity around the world, it comes from zero carbon sources. So let's uh, turn it off and all the way off and then all the way on, if you would. Here it is with it off. Okay, just click once, way up there. Yep. Watch this. 2.6 degrees. High carbon pricing could keep us from burning coal, oil, and gas. Along with electrification, we're halfway there. What else do we need to do? Stop deforestation. Indonesia, Brazil, food changes will make it easier to stop deforestation because we don't need to chop down trees to grow food for animals to feed to people. So if we did that, before we, don't do it yet, here we go, go back to here, 2.6, bring it all the way down, stop deforestation, it is another 0.1 degree. You're noticing there's no one thing that does this. Many things adding up. What else do we need to do? Reduce coal. Now, coal, look up here in brown. You can see in that top area, it's shrinking some. Let's shrink it all the way. Click on those three dots. When you play with it, there's a whole advanced view. We could ban coal around the world. What would it do? Let's try this. We scroll down here. Stop building new coal infrastructure. The carbon price did a lot. Banning coal around the world does even more. Air quality improves. Equity increases. Environmental justice gets built if we're able to reduce coal and reduce the air pollution that causes so much suffering for people. What else do we need? We're at 2.5. What else? Building electrification. That would complement all we've done with decarbonization. Heat pumps, et cetera. Absolutely. What else? Eliminate food waste. Eliminating food waste would do so much right here for cutting deforestation. It's also part of cutting methane and other gases. Because what's happening with food waste is it goes out to the landfill and then it emits methane. I'm going to change a lot in the whole methane world here. Here it is down to 2.1. A big impact from those other gases. It's not just about carbon dioxide. We're getting close. 2.1. What else do we need to do? Renewable energy is being, look at that big green wedge already. The carbon price in banning coal is pushing demand over there. So we're getting so much in that green wedge. Let's push it some more. And absolutely, we need more, as you have here in Rhode Island, offshore wind, et cetera. What else? 
Say that again, sir. More trees. What if we plant some more trees? Give it a click. That's going to remove carbon from the atmosphere and store it in trees and then into soils. We're at two degrees. Gosh, I'd love to get to 1.9, get under that goal of two. What's the last one? Energy efficiency, buildings and industry, insulation, et cetera. How are we doing? We're, we're getting close. At this point, I'd like to put your eyes towards what's happening around the corner. Experimentation in agriculture, soil sequestration at the farm connected to this world around the corner. I lost the name of the farm. What's your farm? Ocean Hour Farm. They're doing experiments in figuring out how to manage animals and the land so that we don't till as much and also store more carbon dioxide in soil. Let's go underneath here. Ag soil carbon, ag soil sequestration, we actually start pulling carbon out of the atmosphere and we get down to 1.8 degrees. Give yourself a hand, you did it. Now let's go back. How did we do with ocean acidification? There's less burning of coal, oil, and gas, less deforestation, there's less CO2 in the atmosphere. So what we have is the blue line. The blue line, notice, look closely, it's not just flat. As so many of you asked for, it is being restored. We are deacidifying the ocean. It's not following the black line, it is leveling and then climbing back again. Oceans restoring its old, the state where it was before to support life. Let's go look at sea level rise. Are there places that would benefit from all of this? Let's go look at that neighborhood if we were able to limit warming to 1.8. Now, we can't avoid all of the effects, but let's look and see in that neighborhood. We're going to undo, we're going to undo, I think, the, um, the storm surge. So undo the storm surge, if you would, in the bottom left. We're not looking at the Hurricane Bob effect. Instead, I think we want to go down here and hit the 21st century, maybe redo it. And it's not quite, maybe you should open the other side. Yeah, on the left, open that sea level rise map and see what it shows. Sea level rise for Newport. Because right now it's still showing um, the overall storm surge. What we can do is look, and now we can calculate places in the world that if we follow this track would not be at risk. That's an opening to Alexandria, Egypt. <laughs> it's a big world uh, for this issue. And zoom in there and we can see, look in that Wellington Street area that we all just know right here. These green areas would have been at risk to sea level rise under the first scenario. They are not under this scenario. We have done things that would make a much better future in that neighborhood. So I've been hollering at you pretty intensely for 12 minutes now. We've created a world that would be much better through various actions. And I'd like you to think, look at this act, set of actions of pushing back on the fossil fuel industry, promoting energy efficiency, electrification, cutting deforestation, improving agriculture, planting trees, put it all together. And I'd like you to think, what would you love about being part of a world on track to making something like this happen? I'm going to be silent for 30 seconds because I've just been hollering so much. 30 seconds. Think, what would you love about being part of a world on track to making something like this happen. Thank you, Laura. Who knew 30 seconds could take so long? What would you love? Tell me. What would you love? Healthier people. What would you love? Being an early adopter. What else would you love? Healthier oceans united in goals. What would you love? Building communities. What would you love? 
Small farms, regeneration. What would you love? Feeling empowered to make change. I hope that having gone through this, being part of this whole community of sport, of ocean, of activism, I hope you feel empowered, as this person just said, to make change. What did it take? There was no one thing we're searching for. We're not looking for the fix, the magical fix that comes out and saves us from this challenge. Instead, it took many seeds to plant this garden. It took many seeds across the board at many scales, in many sectors of the world. All of them have a priority, which is less burning coal, oil, and gas, reducing methane, and cutting deforestation. It's still possible. It's not going to be easy, my friends. It's going to be worth it. Go get them.